most people, when they, they think about oil, uh, think of when we're going to run out. And really, that's the wrong question to ask, because oil in the earth is not like oil or uh, gasoline in the gas tank of your car. Uh, when your car runs out of gas, then you know there's a problem. Uh, and it, but it doesn't run out until you get to the, the last drops. But with oil in the earth, it's a very different situation. We can't just pump oil out of the earth at any arbitrary rate. All oil production, whether it's in one oil field or one country or the planet as a whole, always follows a bell curve. When you drill your first well, if the oil's close to the surface under pressure, you get a gusher. You drill more wells, the pressure goes down, the table goes down. But also you're pumping out the light, sweet oil, which has risen to the top. The heavier, uh, more expensive oil to refine, the harder to get oil, is obviously way down deep. And you have to start putting in, pumping in water or carbon dioxide or natural gas if you've got some around and to start forcing the oil out, just as is happening in Saudi Arabia. So what you get is this curve. It, it starts, um, pulls up quite quickly, you get more and more and more out, then you reach this peak or plateau. When you get to about the halfway point, the rate of, that you can extract the resource be, uh, peaks. And after that point, no matter how much effort you put into it, you can't continue extracting the resource at the same rate. The rate of extraction peaks and begins to fall. We're sort of in the middle right now. We're right at the peak. We're at the point where the world is producing the most oil it will ever produce. And uh, we are going to enter the arc of decline uh, very shortly, if not already. It's a little bit unclear whether or not we've actually already entered it. It's one of these phenomena that you only can say that with, with phenomenal, yes, we are sure, when you look back in a rearview mirror and say, uh, gosh, obviously we peaked, but usually by the time it's clear, it's so far in the past that you're well into a, di a totally different era. And once it goes into that decline, it's a permanent kind of a decline, it might be a bumpy decline, and then you've got yourself a gap between what you want to use and what the supply is. Peaking means categorically that you no longer grow. The effect of crossing over the peak means, in essence, that every barrel of oil that you produce from that moment on will be more expensive. It will, will require more energy to get out of the ground, and it'll be a lesser quality of oil. The guy that basically is, is most renowned for picking the peaking concept uh, was a person named N Dr. M. King Hubbard. M. King Hubbard was um, probably the most uh, famous and influential geologist of the 20th century. Uh, he worked for the U.S. Geological Survey. He worked for oil companies like Shell and their research division. In 1956, at some industry convention, he made a startling speech and put up a bunch of graphs that basically said from all of his calculations, Sometime in the early 1970s, the United States of America would peak as an oil province. And once we reached that point, it didn't matter how much we drilled, how fast we drilled, what the price of oil was, we would basically start into decline. Very few people took him seriously, in, in spite of the fact that he was so uh, universally respected. Of course, uh, U.S. oil production did, in fact, peak in, in 1970-71. Uh, and as a result of that, a few more people started, started to take him seriously. If you go back and you read the U.S. petroleum history, one of the most incredible ironies, in my opinion, is that in 1970, Dr. Hubbard's reputation was in shambles. And the thing that his critics just said in glee, in print all the time, was remember that old guy that said we were going to run out of oil in the early 70s? Look, the United States has never produced more than this year, the year we peaked. It seemed to take the better part of a decade or more before the oil experts in the United States looked back and said, isn't this interesting? We've clearly peaked. He uh, um, went on to predict a global oil production peak for the mid-1990s, which probably would have been accurate if it hadn't been for the uh, oil shocks of the 1970s, which drove oil prices so high that they destroyed demand and as a result of that, uh, oil production 
actually decreased for the first time in history during the early 1970s. And this had the effect of delaying the global oil production peak for probably 10 or 15 years. The only scientists that seem to have taken this really seriously are the old timers. Whereas the young guys are mesmerized by the technology. We created a generation and a half of Nintendo geologists that sit at their workstation and basically move around images until I say, wow, look at that bright spot. The books on oil have been as cooked as the books at Enron. In the late 1980s, virtually all of the Arab oil countries reported extraordinary reserve increases of something like uh, 50 to 100 percent just within a year or two. And this wasn't related to any huge new discoveries. It was mostly political because OPEC was contemplating new rules at the time that would say that uh, a country could expand its rate of uh, production in oil sales commensurate to its reserves. So there was this incentive to report increased reserves in order to increase market share. But the evidence that that oil that has been reported as reserves is actually there is, is very flimsy. So we don't actually know how much oil is in Saudi Arabia or Iraq for that matter. Is there 115 billion barrels of oil in Iraq as is uh, noted in the, in the press again and again? Or could it be 40 billion or 60 billion? We don't really know. Experts like uh, Matt Simmons, the pessimists, are saying that it's, it's probably on the, on the low side. Uh, Saudi Arabia may have already peaked. If it turns out that Saudi Arabia has peaked, then categorically the world has peaked.